out fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Voyager Class Cheetor from the Transformers Studio Series from Hasbro. Cheetor is number 98 in the series and of course he is from the upcoming film Transformers Rise of the Beasts. I have the logo up here in the corner. Uh, some nice artwork here of the cheetah mode on the front and on the side. Over on this side we have some artwork of the robot mode. Not really much going on on the bottom. Just have the Rise of the Beast logo there on top. Spinning it around to the back. Some product shots of the robot mode and the cheetah mode. But I gotta say the color palette here is much darker than the actual toy. So I don't know if these pictures were taken in shadow. Or this was what maybe the original color palette was going to be. I don't know. Uh, it also says Peruvian Jungle Discovery. So I'm assuming... That's like the name of the mission. Maybe they go to Peru at some point. Or maybe that's where they find him in a Peruvian jungle. I'm not sure. Um, that's pretty much it for the packaging. I will have to say, though, no official uh, GM license sticker here. So apparently this is not an officially licensed GM mechanical cheetah. Better luck next time. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's get him out of the box here and we'll take a closer look. Taking a quick look at the background piece that is included with Cheetor. It looks nice. It's just a fun little, you know, jungle scene. You have this river coming down here, a little bit of sunshine in the back. Kind of a nice little scene there. Not too much to it, but I like it. I think it looks good. So here is Cheetor out of the packaging. I think the robot mode looks pretty good. Nice and clean. Not really much kibble here on the back. You do have the tail and you have this little back skirt. You can move this around a little bit. It would have been nice if this could have come all the way up and sat against the back and then maybe had the tail rotate down on the other side, you know, against the back. But it's not a big deal. It doesn't really get in the way of articulation all that much. And it does fit pretty nicely against the back there. And if you really wanted to, you could just have him have a tail. He's a cat after all. Could do that. So you have some options there. But for the most part, I think the robot mode looks pretty good. Now, I've seen a lot of people online complain that the color scheme is kind of drab. And I get that in terms of a toy. That is kind of the truth. But the Studio Series is usually trying to be as accurate to the, the movie as possible. And I feel like if you did have a giant robotic cat on Earth and it was trying to blend in, this is probably the color scheme it would go for. Um, I know maybe some fluorescent green or something else to really pop on the robot mode would look better for the toy, but if they're trying to be as accurate to the movie as possible, I think this color scheme makes a lot more sense for a giant robotic cat not trying to draw a lot of attention to itself on Earth. Uh, but in any case, I think it looks cool. We do get a little bit of green for the eyes, and I think the head sculpt looks pretty good. I like that quite a bit. A lot of nice detail and paint application there on the head. And we have a ball joint so you can look up about that much, look down that much. A little bit of tilt side to side, certainly look side to side, no problem whatsoever. A lot of nice detailing here on the chest. Got the little maximal symbol. Got the cheetah spots. You have kind of a nice like wash effect down here where it kind of looks like he's a little battle damaged. He's a little worse for wear, but not too bad which is kind of a nice effect. Some nice paint up here on the shoulders, some more spots here on the bicep, and some more nice paint applications here on the forearm. The legs are pretty clean once you go past the knees. Like You do, of course, have the spots here on the thigh, but then down here is pretty solidly clean. Shoulders can rotate all the way around, and you do have a hinge out to the side, and the shoulder pads will kind of move to accommodate that which is nice. So if you have it down, you can pop them down. But then if you need to raise it up, the shoulder pad will raise up there with you. Bicep swivel, pretty much 90 degrees there at the elbow. Uh, you have a wrist swivel. Then you have these claws. I do kind of wish the claws could go a little bit further, maybe an additional 90 degrees and lay flat against the forearm. But you can kind of give them like little claws, like, like Wolverine claws if you want. Uh, which doesn't look too bad, but then otherwise that's about as far back as you can go. I don't love the look of that, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. Uh, if you do move the skirt out of the way, you do get some waist swivel there. Uh, in the hips, you can kick pretty far forward. Again, if you lift this up, you can kick pretty far back and really nicely out to the side there like that. You have a swivel right above the knee. 
And then I would say you have 90 degrees there in the knee, and then you do, of course, have some really nice ankle tilt. I mean, a ridiculous range of motion there on the ankle tilt. And then you have a little bit in the front toes, mostly because of how it transforms. And then you have a little bit of movement here on the back as well. Just the tiniest little bit. You can kind of see how... Because it really is kind of solidly... But it, it has that tiniest little bit. <laughs> Basically where that pin is, there's the tiniest little bit of up and down. So but a wide range of ankle tilt to the side. But overall, I think the robot mode looks pretty good. Let me put this back, put the tail back in. Of course, he does come with two accessories. So he has these two spears, I guess, for lack of a better term. And at first I thought they were identical, but they're actually not. They are different sizes. You get a nice little bit of silver paint there for the tips. And then you can actually peg these together to make one large staff, which is pretty cool. So you have a couple options here. You can put one in each hand, or you can peg them together in his palm here. Where is it? There we go. I just have to line it up. So you can have one big spear like that, or you can have one in each hand like this. Or you actually have weapon storage on the back. So you have these two spots right here. And then you have these big tabs on the side of each spear. And so you can peg both of these on here like so. Or one at a time, or both of them. They'll both fit if you want. So that's pretty cool. A lot of nice options there. I feel like that's a pretty good weapon. I like that he can dual wield them. He could use it together as one staff, or he can store them on the back. I think that's really cool. So you have a lot of nice options there. But yeah, overall, I like the robot mode. I think it works pretty well. All right, so transformation's honestly not as difficult as you might think. Uh, I'm gonna start by uh, swiveling the legs around at that thigh joint, 180 degrees. And then we're gonna just make it look like he's kicking completely forward like this. You're going to grab a hold of the shin guard here and lift this up. And then there is a tab on the inside right there, which is gonna tab into this spot right here. So you're just gonna bring this up and tab that into place and we'll repeat that of course with the other leg as well so once that's in there like that you'll bring this part down like so and then there is a hinge here in the pin so then this part will come down and then you just flip this up like that so bring this up bring this down and then flip that up and then at that point you can just bring the tail down like so. So that's pretty much the entire back part of the cheetah. Uh, you can bring the arms down here for now, but first we need to grab a hold of this panel here on the back and flip that open to reveal a massive cheetah head popping out of the back there. And while we're here, we can open up the front part of the chest, flip the robot head inside, and then close this up and then close this back up. So we're just kind of trading out heads. Then you can see here that there's kind of a lot of empty space in here, but there's these tabs here on the side of the cheetah head. And you have to make sure that this is down in the right configuration. But these tabs here on the side of the arms are going to tab in to these tabs here on the side. So you just have to kind of line it up, bring this in. And it can take a little doing just because it's a little confusing exactly what orientation the cheetah head needs to be at but you'll eventually figure it out and then you can bring that in and tab those together like so and then at that point you're going to rotate these to the side and then just rotate that at the bicep swivel and then rotate the hands so that the claws are facing forward and then I kind of like to just bring these back like that and straighten everything out and there you go there is cheetor in cheetah mode so i think it's not too bad i do appreciate the fact that there's not really a lot of gaps i think they did a pretty nice job of filling everything out i think the cheetah head looks pretty good got the green eyes there you have some nice detailing all around all the gray accents you have the nose painted very nice the spots up here 
the mouth can open and you can see they got all the teeth molded in there which is actually pretty cool. It would have been nice if they would have painted the inside like the tongue is red, but not that big of a deal. Articulation-wise, you have the movement here from the arm joint. That was the elbow previously. And you can move this a little bit like this. So you have that. You have the wrist swivel. You have the, the claw movement. So pretty much anything you had in the arms is still present. Here at the back, uh, kind of the same thing. This joint is kind of new. This wasn't really present in robot mode, so you can move that around. Otherwise, uh, this is just the knee joint, but now going in the opposite direction. And then you have this tail movement here. You kind of have a pin there, and you have a pin there. So you can move it around those two spots. Uh, this is actually supposed to peg in. There's a tiny little uh, peg spot right there and a tiny little peg. It's very minor. And it doesn't really matter if it comes undone or not, to be quite honest. But yeah, a little cheetah mode. Uh, you can still store the weapons in this mode if you would like. So you can still pop these in these two spots here, just like when it was on the back of the robot mode. So if you like that look, you can do that. Otherwise, you have your mechanical cheetah. I think it looks pretty good. I think Cheetor is pretty fun. I really like the robot mode. I like the Cheetah mode. I will say it's a fairly simplistic transformation, but I do think it gives us a couple new uh, bits of engineering that previous Cheetor molds haven't really done. Uh, having the heads be stored in the chest and kind of swivel around, and also having the shin piece come up and rotate onto the back to kind of give the leg different articulation for Cheetah mode, I think is actually kind of cool. I, it's probably been done, but it feels different than the Kingdom Cheetors we've had recently. Uh, but otherwise, like I said, I think he looks good. I definitely understand the complaints with the color palette being a little bit bland. You know, at least in the robot mode, they could have maybe given him a little bit more color here on the chest just because, you know, he wouldn't necessarily be in disguise when he's in robot mode. So they could have done something to make it pop a little bit more. But I do really like the head sculpt. I like the fluorescent green for the eyes in robot mode. I think that really does pop. Maybe a little bit more of that green somewhere else throughout the robot mode, at least maybe for the maximal symbol or something, just to give them a little bit more. Uh, but overall, I like the accessories. I like the transformation. Overall, I think it's a pretty fun figure. I will point out, though, I'm just starting to notice that the elbow on mine is starting to get a little loose. Not a huge problem, not a deal breaker, but something to be a little wary of. Hopefully that's not everybody's, but it's pretty quickly to be getting that loose which is a bummer not i don't think it's a problem over on this one yet so we'll see how that holds up but for the most part i think it's a fun figure i'm getting excited for the movie so i was really happy to pick this one up let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh but i i think it's fun i think it's definitely worth checking out worth picking up i mean is it a must have that's going to be up to you maybe wait for a sale but i definitely think it's a fun figure and it's worth checking out so let me know what you guys think in the comments below please like share and subscribe Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks so much for watching.